Next, we have a talk by Dr. P.S. Butt from Omega Hospital. He's the interventional cardiologist. He will be speaking on pacemaker ECG. Dr. P.S. Butt. Good evening to you all. I will be brief. I think you had a long day and uh, mine is about pacing. Pacing has come for a long way. In the 19, I think early 1950s onwards, pacing is in vogue to save patients from bradycardias, heart blocks, syncope, and tachybrady arrhythmia, which came later on. What is pacing? Pacing means whenever the heart rate is all the electrical activity, see we are dealing with ECGs, the electrical activities of the heart. When the electrical activities are less, bradycardias, maybe the sinus bradycardias, many times in the six sinus syndrome, uh, tachybradyarrhythmias, you have tachycardias, how to treat them? And at times they go to bradycardia, the six sinus syndrome, they go like that. So then what do you do? Then you need pacing. Similarly, heart blocks, it could be congenital, that could be acquired. Congenital, some people rarely have, but children have heart blocks. Similarly, heart blocks is a degenerative disorder, especially the elderly. Then you need pacemakers. Or high degree AV blocks, trifascicular blocks, or electrophysiologically, if you measure HV prolongation, then you need pacing. So, what are the types of pacemakers? What, you, what are these pacemakers? Pacemakers initially came with a crude thing that is called external pacemaker. They used to keep two paddles, one in the anteriorly, one posteriorly. See, in the ICUs, when patients had cardiac arrest, what do you do? There is a yeah, horizontal line, no cardiac activity. Then these paddles can be, could be kept anteriorly and posteriorly, and then switch on the defibrillator. They have external pacemakers. They are of some use, but not all effective. Then we have internal pacing. It could be temporary or permanent. Temporary when you have, suppose, inferior wall MI patients come with bradycardia and heart block. Usually it is reversible. So in a week's time, they revert. In that case, transvenous pacing is done, either through the femoral vein or subclavian. You put in a lead into the right ventricle apex and pace. Connect to your battery or external pacemaker, then you can put it into uh, require rate, whichever you need. Usually the heart rate is below 40 and then there is hypotension, you need pacing. Then it could be single chambered. Either you, most commonly it is in this ventricular pacing. You put in the pacing lead into the right ventricular apex so that you have a ventricular pacing. But many a times you need by uh, bi dual chamber pacing to atrium and ventricle because Whenever the scene, there is a horse racing, then if the horse doesn't ride, then it, 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 the jockey gives it a kick. Similarly, atrial kick, the atrium contracts, it contributes about 25% to the cardiac output. So whenever you need somebody who is young, who is exercising or swimming, or anybody in that case, or in some people with a thick musculature, they get into it, uh, pacemaker syndrome, those patients, you need dual chamber, atrial pacing followed by ventricular pacing. That gives good cardiac output. That is why you go, need that. So this is how basically what we do. Coming to the chambers, what we have is chambers where there is a North American Society of uh, Pacing and Electrophysiology and the British, they have the nomenclature chamber paste. That is atrium, it could be single chamber, atrium, ventricle, or it could be dual chamber, where you have atrium and ventricle, both can be paced. Then there is a cham chamber sensed. There is a, this pacing is a co complex electro electronics. It, it paces, it senses, and it modulates. We can, you can even program that, depending on the, if you want to increase the rate or reduce the rate, increase the output, increase the refractory periods or uh, these are the things which could be programmed. So in the uh, pacing you have chamber pace, that is the first one, A. Next thing is chamber sensed. If the, there is atrial activity or the ventricle activity, these pacemakers could keep quiet because 
that is why we, they are, that means they are sensing the electrical activity of the, of the person or the patient. Suppose in the uh, refractory period, that is, it doesn't sense properly and gives a stimulus, it could lead to ventricular fibrillation. So it is very important, the atrial sensing is very important. So with that, I means inhibited. If the atrium, if the uh, pacemaker is sensing properly, it inhibits. So it doesn't give a stimulus. So you will have inhibited or D means dual. It could be in, uh, inhibited or it could be triggered. Whenever you need that kind of pacing is also there. Then programmability. It could be programmable. Newer pacemakers have programmability where you can program it, rate the uh, output, refractory period and other things. All can be programmed from externally with the programmer. So what you look for in the ECG? When there is a pacing with the spike, there will be a spike followed by the, that chamber will be contracting. So that will show the, if it is in the atrium, there will be P waves. If there is a ventricle, then you'll have QRS complex. So rate, QRS axis, STT changes, these are all the things which you have to see and underlying rhythm. See, this is the VVI pacing. V means it is in the ventricle is getting paced, ventricle is being sensed and it is inhibited. Whenever the patient has his own rate, the pacemaker will keep quiet. So here you see, see here is a spike followed by a QRS complex, which is white. So uh, <coughs> this shows that is a ventricular pacing. Then if you see in the ventricles, what you do is we keep the lead in the RV apex. So you have a left axis deviation, lead three usually in the, in the there is a left axis deviation and the QRS morphology is like a left bundle branch block. That means the right ventricle is being paced. So from the right ventricle, left ventricle, uh, left ventricle is getting uh, stimulated. So that's why you get a left bundle branch block pattern. So it's the same thing, VVI pacing, we have the spike followed by left, left bundle branch type of pattern that is the uh, RV pacing. This is the uh, photograph of the lead. Generally, when we do a permanent pacing, what we do is a subclavian uh, uh, vein puncture through which we put in a lead into the right ventricle apex. So you s see that it is in the right ventricle apex. Lead is in the right ventricle apex. In case we have dual chamber pacing, then we put in another lead. It comes from above and here, somewhere here in the right atrial appendage. And that moves semicircular pattern with each systole. So you can make sure that it is in the right atrial apex. And when you have a lateral view, you are sure that it is pointing anteriorly because the right ventricle is anterior. This is the dual chamber pacing. DDD D, D means dual chamber, atrium. See here, you can see a small spike that is in the atrium followed by another spike that is in the ventricle. So atrium is for, uh, initially stimulated after a short period there is a time gap there is the PR in terms of the, after the atrial systole you have the ventricular uh, stimulation and you get the ventricular contact. So in this case you get the full benefit of the atrial kick so the cardiac output remains good they don't get into uh, uh, pacemaker problems and uh, they can exercise if you can increase the heart rate with, uh, as needed, then they can go to a good exercise tolerance. They will have uh, swimming, uh, playing games, all those things they can do. Then next we have, these days we have single lead where we have a, uh, they can do atrial sensing. So the lead is floating in the right atrium and it senses and it paces the ventricle. So you have the benefit of atrial uh, exercise Whenever you want to increase exercise, depending on the oxygen saturation or the breathing, uh, this increases the heart rate. This could be you have the atrioventricular synchrony. This is when the conduction system is all right, but the sinus is sleepy or it is not functioning properly, then you can do this atrial pacing. This is the AAI. The, the, see the stimulus. You see here, 
followed by atrial contraction and a narrow QRS complex because the AV node is functioning all right, metal branches functioning normally. So you have a atrial pacing and you have a QRS complex is narrow. The same thing. Here, the, see many places you see normal, the patients meet only, then there is a gap, then this is called hysteresis. After that, you have the atrial uh, uh, pacing uh, followed by QRS complex. Sometimes what happens is these pacemakers, uh, patients, when they were go near the uh, uh, large uh, uh, transformers, the, near the airport, or doing going to the kitchen in the microwave oven, then they get disturbed because there is a high activity electromagnetic waves. They get, they, those things are sensed and the pacemaker keeps quiet. This is what is happening here. Muscle twitches, electromagnetic waves, microwaves can sometimes lead to, see here it is keeping quiet because it is sensing some external uh, electromagnetic uh, waves there. Then when the pace, uh, pacemaker is failing, how do you make it out? Pacemaker is failing means it uh, fails to sense or it fails to capture. Even if there is a beat, it is not uh, causing contraction properly. This could be because of either there is a fracture in the lead or the fa uh, this thing lead is displaced or sometimes the battery is failing or the circuitry is, is at fault. Then you will find that, see here, See here it is, over the, see the QRS complex, it is not sensing properly. That is why you say there is a stimulus. So it is not sensing properly. Similarly, there are some, uh, see here, here there is a spike, but it is not facing. So there is sensing failure and capture failure. So both ways there is a failure. This is a uh, pacemaker uh, uh, problem, which has to be properly recognized and then it has to be rectified. Then ultimately, these batteries have a life. When we were, you see, I was doing in DM that time, long back, we had mercury battery, quite big, 50 grams. You, and they have a short life. Three and a half years, four years, they, have, they fail, then you put a new one. Today, luckily, we have a smaller ones, lithium battery, come for 10 to 12 years. So how do you know that that battery is still working or not? So you can do that, of course, with the, uh, machines you can make out, but uh, looking at the ECG also you can make out what there will be dropping at the pacing rate. Usually they will be set around 70, so they come down to 68, like that the pacing rate is coming down, increasing the pulse width, that pulse width will be wider. Then we, there is, usually we have another, what they call is a magnet. If, if you keep the magnet over the pacemaker battery, it works like a fixed heart rate. It, uh, even if the patient is giving his uh, rhythm, it won't uh, it will go on giving bits. So that exact what is the rate you can make out. That is the magnetic rate. And of course, loss of capture and spike. Here, this is the how you can make out. See, here there is, there is a signal, uh, there is, but there is no contraction. That means uh, it is not, uh, uh, <coughs> it is not contracting, that uh, probably the battery is failing. Similarly, see, he, here is uh, over the QRS, there is a spike. That means it is not sensing properly. So there is sensing failure, capture failure. That means the pacemaker is malfunctioning. This is the time to change. So basically, when postgraduates, you see, look at the ECG. There is a spike and see what is the after the spike. If there is a P wave, it is a atrial. The lead is in the atrium, it is giving atri atrial contract. Look at the uh, spike and if you have a wide QRS, usually right, uh, in the right ventricle means left bundle branch pattern. That means the uh, it is a uh, RV pacing. Looking at that and the rate, you can make out, oh, this patient is having a pacemaker and is functioning properly. Or if there is any problem, then you can, of course, refer to somebody, a senior a cardiologist, so you can do the thing, whatever is needed. I think there is in brief about pacing. I think uh, for a postgraduate to begin with, this is good enough. Then uh, there are now pacemakers are used in intra ICDs and biventricular pacing. It is a little high for us. This you should know that heart failure, there is a asynchrony, mainly left bundle branch block button is there. Then you put uh, 
பை வென்ட்ரிகுலர் பேசிங் ஒன் இந்த ரைட் வென்ட்ரிகுல் எனது இந்த குரந்த விசாரிச்சு இந்த டீப் இந்த வெயின் தட் ஸ்டிமுலேட்ஸ் தி லெஃப்ட் வென்ட்ரிகுல் ஸோ ஹேவ் பை வென்ட்ரிகுலர் பேசிங் ஸோ தி கன்ட்ராக்ஷன் ஆஃப் தி லெஃப்ட் வென்ட்ரிகுல் இஸ் சிங்கரனைஸ் தர் இஸ் எ பெட்டர் கார்டிக் அவுட் தர் இஸ் எ ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் ஃபார் கன்ஜஸ்டிவ் ஹார்ட் ஃபெயில் ஸோ வித் திஸ் ஐ தேங்க் யூ ஆல் ஃபார் தி அட்டென்ஷன் அண்ட் தேங்க் யூ டாக்டர் பிரபாகர் ஃபார் காலிங் மீ தேங்க் யூ வெரி மச் தேங்க் யூ சார் Uh, I request Dr. Syed M.K., in- Interventional Cardiologist, Father Bulla Medical College to hand over a Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. P.S. Butt.